Deep in the forests, across bustling cities, and even on remote islands, one clever creature has conquered them all, the raccoon. But this mask bandit isn't just one species. Three distinct true raccoon species exist across the Americas, each with their own remarkable story of survival and adaptation. Join us as we unmask the identities of these little bandits. Let's begin with the common raccoon. Some love them, some hate them. The common raccoon dominates a vast territory that spans from the northern forests of Canada through the United States and Mexico, reaching as far south as Panama. This extensive range covers dense forests, mountainous regions, coastal marshes, and even arid deserts, showcasing their remarkable geographic versatility. Within these diverse landscapes, common raccoons establish home territories, typically spanning between one to three square miles, though this varies significantly depending on food availability. Unlike their specialized relatives, these raccoons aren't tied to specific environmental features. They simply need access to water, food, and suitable den sites. For shelter, they're equally adaptable. Tree hollows serve as primary natural dens, particularly in old-growth forests where cavities in mature trees provide ideal protection. Rock crevices, abandoned burrows, and dense brush thickets serve as alternative shelters across their range. In winter months, particularly in northern regions, raccoons may den together temporarily for warmth, with up to 23 individuals documented sharing a single den in extreme cases. Their diet reflects their geographic diversity. In coastal areas, they consume crustaceans, fish, and mollusks. Inland populations favor fruits, nuts, and seeds when available, supplemented by insects, small mammals, amphibians, and bird eggs. Their seasonal diet can shift dramatically. Northern populations gorge in autumn to build fat reserves for winter, while southern populations maintain more consistent feeding patterns year-round. Water access shapes their geographical distribution. While not dependent on permanent water bodies like their crab-eating cousins, common raccoons rarely establish territories more than three miles from a water source, explaining their absence from certain arid regions. Urban settings have become raccoon havens, with city populations reaching five to ten times the density of rural areas. These metropolitan raccoons have adapted to human rhythms, becoming more crepuscular while transforming our infrastructure, attics, chimneys, and storm drains, into substitute dens. Human trash and waste provide year-round sustenance, leading to urban raccoons growing up to 40% larger than their forest relatives. This uneasy coexistence creates complex challenges, as humans both admire them as interesting creatures and struggle with the property damage and health concerns these opportunistic neighbors sometimes bring. As we move southward into Central and South America, the common raccoon's territory gradually gives way to that of its specialized relative, the crab-eating raccoon, a species with much more specific geographic and dietary requirements. Where water meets land in the tropical regions of the Americas, you'll find our next raccoon species, the crab-eating raccoon, a creature bound to its watery domain in ways its northern cousin could never imagine. These southern raccoons have a more restricted territory, from Costa Rica through Panama and into South America, reaching as far south as northern Argentina and Uruguay. But within this range, they're creatures of specific habitats. Mangrove swamps, riverbanks, and marshy lowlands form the boundaries of their world. Though strikingly similar to their northern relatives at first glance, these southern specialists reveal subtle differences. A sleeker build, shorter fur with less distinct markings, and slightly larger teeth suited to their specialized diet. Their territory rarely extends more than one kilometer from permanent water bodies, creating ribbon-like distribution patterns that follow the contours of rivers and coastlines. Their name reveals their ecological niche. While common raccoons are true omnivores, crab-eating raccoons have developed a particular fondness for crustaceans. Crabs, crayfish, and freshwater shrimp make up nearly 60% of their diet in many regions. Their hunting technique involves methodical probing of muddy substrates, using sensitive whiskers and touch receptors to detect the slightest movement below the surface. Dens differ dramatically from their northern counterparts. Hollow mangrove trunks, spaces among exposed roots, and abandoned burrows and riverbanks provide shelter. 
During seasonal flooding, a regular occurrence in their preferred habitats, these raccoons may remain in the same area, simply shifting to higher portions of trees until waters recede. While common raccoons have colonized human settlements with remarkable success, crab-eating raccoons remain largely wild. Human encroachment on wetlands poses significant challenges, as these specialized animals cannot easily adapt to urban environments when their aquatic feeding grounds disappear. Yet as specialized as the crab-eating raccoon is, an even more remarkable story awaits on a small island off Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, home to the rarest raccoon species on Earth. The Cozumel or Pygmy raccoon exists nowhere else on Earth but this 48-square-kilometer patch of land. Unlike its continental cousins with their vast territories, the Cozumel raccoon's geographic range is severely restricted. The island's limited size means these raccoons must survive within a fragmented habitat of mangrove swamps, sandy beaches, and interior forests. Their entire population exists within an area smaller than many city parks. The most immediately striking feature of these island dwellers is their size. Standing at just 25% smaller than mainland raccoons, they exemplify the island phenomenon where mammals often become smaller when isolated on islands. An adult male typically weighs between 3 to 4 kilograms, roughly half the weight of a similarly aged common raccoon. Their coloration differs subtly from mainland species. A paler coat with less prominent facial markings gives them a distinctive appearance. Their muzzles appear proportionally longer and their tails shorter, with fewer rings than their continental relatives. The Cozumel raccoon's survival depends on the island's unique ecosystem. Their diet centers primarily on crabs, which make up nearly 50% of their food intake. They supplement this with small reptiles, fruit, and insects found within their restricted range. Unlike the adaptable common raccoon, these island specialists haven't developed the flexibility to thrive alongside human settlements. Their den sites reflect the island's limited options, hollows in the limestone formations, spaces beneath fallen trees, and occasionally abandoned human structures. During hurricane season, these vulnerable animals face periodic devastation as powerful storms sweep across their small island, sometimes destroying significant portions of their habitat in a single event. With fewer than 300 individuals remaining, the Cozumel raccoon ranks among the most endangered carnivores in the world. Tourism development, introduced predators, and road mortality threaten their continued existence. Conservation efforts focus on habitat protection and raising awareness about this unique species that exists nowhere else but this tiny Mexican island. Conclusion From continental expanses to a single isolated island, these three raccoon species showcase nature's incredible diversity. The lovable common raccoon conquers varied landscapes, the crab-eating raccoon specializes in aquatic environments, and the rare Cozumel raccoon reminds us how isolation shapes unique characteristics. If you enjoyed this journey into the different kinds of raccoon species, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell for more wildlife adventures. Tell us, have you ever had an encounter with a raccoon before?